finally have dealt with the cease and desist that I was sent by this person from a lawyer who did not get the full story. So we're going to talk about it. This is the preemptive letter before I got the actual cease and desist. The purpose of this video is to protect anyone else who may come into contact with this person as their predatory ways have been going on as far as I have found since 2017 while they were at Harvard till present day right now. As you will see, this person preyed upon men and women and non-binary people of all races, ages, and sexualities. Through my own investigation, I have found 134 pages of evidence to show how this person has done this consistently for many, many years. Harvard knew all about this person's ways and wanted to contain it as to not get bad PR, knowing that this person would weaponize their gender and race as they've done consistently, which you will also see. I've been given consent by Sean to share this message between him and a black woman creator on this app who many of you know. As you can see above, this person is afraid of being doxxed the way that I was by this specific creator. And this is from another large white woman creator on this app. This is from a group WhatsApp of the Harvard Kennedy School student government that that creator was a part of. This is from another Harvard Business School source. This is from someone who works at Harvard that wrote a letter saying that they do not believe that creator should have been admitted for their predatory ways. This is from a group text that I've been given permission to share and shows this person weaponizing their gender and race in an effort to call on black creators, big black creators that many of you follow, to have them go after black people on their behalf. I was called by her and at the time I was post banned on my main account and I did not have this account. She wanted me to do for her what she got other black creators to do to BP. But she wanted me to do these things in defense of her towards those black creators. They didn't care about the things that we've been talking about in the activism spaces, which is really hard to digest. This was a business and power opportunity. I was consistently asked by that person to create a small business and sponsor them so that they could stay in this country. As I've shared before, I don't make any money off of this app. This further exemplifies all of that. These are the final text messages between me and this person from July 14th and 15th, the day I ended our friendship, and about two weeks before I was publicly doxxed on here by them and four other creators. There's also this, and this, and this. This is from this person's website. I share this because this person used classic techniques of someone like this when they were about to be exposed. They leaked text messages between me and them in an effort to isolate me from the overall communities that I have been a part of for a very long time because they knew that I was putting together all the pieces of the puzzle and didn't want to be exposed. This person has continually harassed me and I had to constantly block the numbers. This person got on a second number and tried to contact me and tried to manipulate me into feeling sorry for them. This was happening to me immediately after I ended our friendship. And then I got this the next day. And it has not stopped since. Countless burner numbers are calling me. I'm getting random emails from random fake people. And it's not okay. I think this is important to share again because it shows how from May 17th, when we first became friends, this was the conversation this person wanted to have with me. Which brings me back to the text message they used to dox me. This. I hold myself fully accountable for that message. However, sometimes context is important. And I want to clarify that in that message, I'm not referring to the entire Black community, that they and those that I'm talking about were in reference to four specific creators. The four creators who used this text message to dox me along with this person. And who ultimately, I'm not mad at in all of this because they were used as well. One of the hardest pills to swallow about all of this for me is that this person who gave our messages to the, those other creators knew that they were implicating those black creators and that they were going to use lawyers to try and silence me, therefore bringing more people into this mess and bringing more people into white supremacist structures that could actually hurt black people. I stand by the fact that I thought, like many of us, we were learning from a radical intersectional feminist with two Harvard degrees. Asian hate has been up over 110% since the beginning of the pandemic, 
it all made sense to me when they were explaining it to me. However, I still want to hold myself accountable with this message because it is never my place as a white person to bring up relationships between other races, even if I'm looking to console someone else. And I want to share this. This is from 2018 when I came forward with the advocate about my first experience with SA while in the modeling industry. I have dealt with predators before. This was a different type of predator that I did not see coming. And I have to say I feel incredibly stupid and used and I just want to make sure that other people don't go through what I went through. While this has been incredibly difficult, I am grateful that it has pushed me to learn and grow in ways that are incredibly necessary. I tried having this conversation privately many times, and I keep being silenced. I'm still being harassed on a consistent basis because of this person. Please seek professional help.